just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. Love it. Look at all the hands. Oh, such a joy to be with you today. I am really excited about this program. Um, it's something that just really got in in some way, and it made so much sense from the perspective of Course in Miracles. And so I'm really excited about sharing it today. And it's called Levels of Mind. Now, this is. Um, a, a model, well, it was a, a, an idea that came through David Hoffmeister, and it's really the foundational material that gave rise to Spiri, that Laverne kind of took it from levels of mind and, and allowed the Christ mind through her to come up with Spiri, the, as, the, as we know it, the personal spiritual assistant that I'm sure all of you are using. Um, and this what, what I'm going to be talking about today is really going to help you understand what you're doing with Spiri. Um, because I really feel it's helpful if you know exactly what you're doing. Um, so to start, I just want to say this has nothing to do with the brain. Levels of mind, mind is not up here. Um, this is the brain, it functions the form. You know, it allows for the heart to beat, the lungs to breathe. Um, there are no thoughts up here. In fact, if you talk to any neurologist anywhere on the planet and ask them, can you really see a thought in the brain? They'll go, well, not really, but we have some ideas. So what's, what we're really accessing is our thoughts, and that's really all we are, are our thoughts. Um, are coming either from the Christ consciousness, which is only love, or they're being sourced by a lower energy level, a lower wavelength. And a lot of this stuff isn't clear to me yet. But I do know, like, if you're in a crowd of people at an anti-anything rally, you're going to feel anti-something, okay? Just because you're around a lot of people that are having a lot of lower base thoughts. So this is why the levels of mind really allows us to see how to break this whole lower, lower energy thinking. So we're going to be accessing the Christ mind. And, and I put together a model of, <laughs> of the Christ mind. Here it is. <laughs> it's very holy and it's white and you can see right through it and it's not blocked and it's clear. And so if you can just see, this doesn't live up here. This is where we're accessing our thoughts from. And we're just a collection of thoughts. Everything, everything we think is a thought. You know, if we think that we have big feet, it's a thought. If we think we live in poverty, it's a thought. So we're really just a collection of these thoughts. Now, this is where we want to get to. The Christ mind. This is the mind that only loves everything, has no opinions about anything. There's nothing wrong or right. Everything is perfect. This is it. Okay, so this is what we're aspiring to. Now, this is you, <laughs> or it could be me. Um, this is somebody, okay? And this is just the collection of our thoughts based on our experience from birth on. You know, if you ever look at a baby, babies are great because you can really see how they learn about their world. Thank you. <laughs> um, babies at some point in their life start identifying as a body and you'll see them. All of a sudden it's like, oh my God, it's attached. This is my body. 
Okay, so they're now identifying as a body. And this is where the separation just continues on and on and on. Because then we have opinions about the hand and the arm and the form. Then we start having opinions projecting out on other people. And it just gets very messy. Okay, so this is when it gets messy. We look like this. Now, if you cut it, cut this in half, this is what you have. This is levels of mind, okay? Out here is our perceptual world. This is, this is all perception. It's how we view, view the world. And it goes in through emotion, thought, belief, and finally to desire, okay? That's how we think. And this is the Christ mind. Don't forget this one. This is at the core of who we are. Every single person wants to love. Every person is looking for love. I mean, it's all insanity because we're looking for something that we already are. So anyway, this whole model that David really allowed through him kind of unravels this whole process of thinking, okay? Um, Peter, if you could maybe put on that diagram. I've got a diagram. We're really getting quite techy here. We're going to have a split screen with me and a diagram. Oh my God, it's, you know, a whole new world. Perfect. So this is a levels of mind diagram. Again, if you look at the middle of this diagram, where it says miracle, if you look up and down, it says miracle. That column is your Christ mind. Okay. So this, this is just to orient you. And then you can see the levels of mind relate to this black and white diagram. I'm trying to figure out which way to go. <laughs> oh, technology. Anyway, this is, this is the, the model of that diagram, okay? Christ mind is at the core of who we are. And then we have all these levels coming out of it. Now, we live in a perceptual world. And so... Initially, anyway, everything we see, we interpret, okay? Good, bad, right, wrong, up, down, fat, thin. You know, we have, it's an endless supply of adjectives that we can do to describe our perceptual world. This is where the cosmos is. This is where astrology lives. This is, I mean, everything is in the perceptual world. The next layer down is emotion. Now, this is kind of a, a real tricky one um, because most people don't like having emotions. Um, I certainly thought <laughs> I was raised in a family. You know, it's like if you were seen crying, it's like, shut up or I'll give you something to cry about. And it's like, OK, let's not let the, this out of the bag. So we've learned how to stuff emotions rather than to express them. And this is where I think the bulk of our problems <laughs> come from. And I, I just need to say, for those of you that are having trouble expressing feelings, because this is the access to breaking this whole thing down and becoming our Christ mind, just living a life of joy and miracles. So having, having emotion, um, if you have difficulty accessing your emotion, what I usually, and I don't usually tell people to go into the body because the body is a perception and it's fraught with its own issues. But in order to access emotions, if you can go inside and just notice, where am I holding tension? What feels hot? What feels painful? Just really go into the body and kind of access the thoughts associated with your body. That oftentimes will allow you to bring up the emotion that's underlying it, okay? So the perception is, oh, I have pain in my lower back. That's a perception, okay? But if you can just go into that pain and see what is there, sadness, anger, and that will sometimes allow this floodgate that gets trapped sometimes with the emotion to kind of open up because we've got to go through it. it. There's no other way around it. It's a messy process. We've all done it. Next week, by the way, I'm very excited. We're going to be doing expression sessions, myth versus reality. And this will show what having feelings looks like and how to really move through them. Okay. But but right now, if you can just see, we have perception, emotion, 
Then we have thought, and this diagram actually is already changing because I'm having downloads on this stuff on a regular basis. On this diagram, you can see I have the ping pong effect going between perception and emotion. Actually, no, that goes much deeper. That can all go all the way down into desire, okay? We can ping pong with no true healing of mind by going into our split desired mind and bouncing back up to perception. So let's talk a little bit about this central, um, God, I wish I could point right over there on the chart. <laughs> um, this central circle in this diagram, and it says separation on one side. So again, this is the miracle, this is the Christ mind, and this goes right through desire. But if you notice, there's a little piece of desire on either side of the Christ mind. And on the right-hand side of the diagram, there's a black dot. That's separation. Okay, that black dot, oh, look, we have a, <laughs> my lovely assistant behind the computer is pointing to the black dot. That's separation. That's where we decided we needed more than everything, according to A Course in Miracles. So that's where we pulled out of everything, thinking, I've got an idea. I may have a better, better idea of how to be happier, okay? So desire can live outside of the Christ mind. The Christ mind is pure love. It doesn't desire for cars, more money, better relationships. It just is pure love, no exception. And this is where all the miracles happen, by the way, is in this, this Christ mind. So when you separate with a little black idea of, God, I could use a new car. Oh, how about a pair of shoes? That puts us into a desire of our ego mind. Ooh, I could be happier if I had a pair of shoes. I could be happier if I had a baby. I could be happier. You, you get the idea. This, just, this is called our lives. <laughs> we spend our entire life getting more stuff to attempt to get back to where we left, which is the Christ mind. Oh, this is so complicated, and yet it's so simple, and yet the unraveling it of, of it has, has really kicked my butt on numerous occasions, is all I can say. So when we get to this split mind, and we, it radiates out, so I want a pair of shoes. Oh, I need shoes on my feet. That would be a belief. A thought is, ooh, I'd like a red pair of heels. That's a thought. The emotion is, ooh, that would make me really happy. And then the perception is out in the world, finding that red pair of pumps that's going to just make your life light up. The problem is once you get the pumps, you realize, well, that's not really it. So we need another pair of shoes or we need a vacation now to go with the shoes or a dinner or a relationship or whatever. It's like it, it just gets very complicated. So the unwinding of this is really to pull back all these ideas of what we need to be happy. And this is tricky stuff. I'm not saying this is easy. I mean, I, you know, I was gifted by having, you know, my dream home pulled from me. And I must say, it's a gift at this point because I wasn't going to leave there. I was going to be dying in that place, but happy, God damn it. And that's not it. I mean, I was slowly dying of resignation. It's like I gave up on the world. I didn't want to be bothered by them anymore, so I'm just going to live in my red pumps. You know, this is, this is how we, we see our worlds. So the unwinding of this is really to stop, I don't want to say consuming, because it's not about consuming or not consuming. It's about the desire. Recognize the desire for what it is. You know, say no to yourself sometimes and just see how your reaction is. What do you mean I can't have the red shoes? Who says? Well, that's not fair. I mean, all these are beliefs that come up with these emotions attached to it. So the unwind is one, one thought at a time, and it starts from what we perceive is making us happy on the planet, okay? So your desire can be split and is split until you get to the point where you love everybody and everything, no exceptions, you have no opinions on anything, you don't 
you know, you love Trump as much as you love Obama. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter. And it's not apathy, it's true love. And that's what we're really trying to get to in the Course in Miracles. That's what Jesus is talking about. So now in this model, if we jump back, there's error in this model, and I'm going to have to correct it, because the ping pong effect, like I said, can go all the way down into the desire. The ping pong effect is where no healing happens. And this is, it appears in my mind as a loop. So I, I see in the world hunger, pisses me off, makes me sad. Okay, so I go through the emotion, I'm sad. The thought, pissed off. The belief that there's, there, there is suffering on the planet. The desire to be helpful. And then it bounces back up to the perception because then I'm off to Africa to, to fix the starving situation. Not a, not a wise idea for most of us. And it didn't work for me. I came back realizing I got everything out of my trip to Africa. I'm not sure I helped anyone there. So this is where we have to really look at our whole thinking mechanism of trying to fix, change, alter things. I was a physician. I was trying to fix all the sick people that were coming into me, which by the way, I just want to give a plug for the inside passage because we're doing a five and a half month online course just to deal with sickness because sickness has, it's a perception and it's a very real perception and it takes I like to say, you know, I, I see us all as getting on a ship together and I may be a, a chapter or a page ahead of where you are, but let's get on the ship together and just start following the Christ mind and dismantling this idea that there's sickness on the planet. So I just want to put a plug in. If you, if you are ill and you're looking for a way out of it, starting in February, we are going to be doing an online program and it's going to be very in-depth. It's going to be a lot of support for this process because there may be emotions come up, thoughts, beliefs, a lot of stuff is going to get cleared in this course. So anyway, this ping pong effect, it, it, it goes with everything. But before I was, <laughs> before I got the diagnosis terminal cancer, which really, really is a bummer. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make for a good day. But the nice thing about it is, I immediately didn't have to think about the future anymore. It erased any thoughts of future and it was like, oh, fuck. I may only be here a short while longer. But then it threw me into the past. And so this ping pong effect for me was going into the past of my life and looking at regrets, which is also not helpful. But this is where perception is a tricky thing. Because when I was in, at different points in my t life, I would have the perception, ooh, I've got the flu, or I've got a stomach bug, or I've got a head cold. Well, I didn't have to think about it too much because I was going to wait it out. I wasn't going to look for the emotion. I didn't care if I had a belief that, that this was even possible. I was just going to give it a couple of days and I'd feel better and then I could move on with my life looking for my red shoes. So this is where it really means that we have to be willing and put this as a priority in our life that I want the Christ mind above all else. I want love in my life above all else. Red shoes be damned, I want my pipe. <laughs> so with that willingness, that allows you to move out of this ping pong effect because you'll, you'll be slapped with a thought. Oh, I had a great dog when I was a child. And then it'll elicit emotion. You'll bounce up to emotion. Oh, the dog died. Oh, that's so sad. And then you'll go into perception. Maybe I need a puppy. I mean, this is, this is a complicated little diagram that doesn't look very complicated. But in your mind, it is. And that's where mighty companions come in. And this is where A Course in Miracles is so beautiful. We're talking about mighty companions that can hold the truth of who you are when you can't. So when I have the thought, oh, I had a dog when, a ch when I was a child, uh, my mighty companions may say, well, is there a feeling around that you'd like to work, work with? 
Instead, we run rampant with our own thinking and we get sad and then we go out and buy dogs and then we start saving everything on the planet that looks like it might be suffering. And it's like, and that just breeds more insanity. So this ping-ponging, we need to stop. We need to stop by first having the willingness and then having a support system that can take our hands and pull us through this. And I just say, I'm so grateful to David Hoffmeister. You know, I was reading on Facebook, someone said, oh, he has guru status. And I, he's not a guru for me, but he's someone that has done his work. He's done this work. He went before us. He's a mighty companion that can say, what you're feeling is normal. This will pass. You know, do a spiri. You know, maybe you just need a hug. I mean, there's a whole lot of different ways to approach this on this healing journey. So I'm just, and you're getting, you're getting levels of mind like I keep getting downloads of because one of the things I just realized yesterday, and this, this was a big one, emotions are not the end of it. Once you have the emotion, that opens the, the gate up to go through and see what the belief is. But all of those live in the perceptual world. I'm not even sure I need to go here. Yeah, you know, that'll be, for, that'll be for chapter two on levels of mind. But for right now, if you can just get perception, emotion, thought, belief, those are the ones that you want to break through. Spiri, your personal spiritual assistant, is an amazing tool that actually, it's a piece of technology that is like a mighty companion. Wow. Oh. It's a mighty bot companion. Anyway, it'll take you through these layers to look at the belief. A lot of people get stuck in Spiri, I just need to say, because as you're going through these layers, it's all based on I'm right and something else is wrong. So as you're going through these layers with Spiri, Spiri at some point is going to ask you to re-look at this. And it's a turnaround. And this is where we see our projection let me see, think of a good projection. Oh, well, I'll use, <laughs> I'll use my examples. Um, ooh, she's gained a little weight, okay? I'm right, she's gained weight, I'm right. And, you know, and there's a belief that you can gain weight and you can be heavy and you, whatever. <clears throat> now, the turnaround on this is, where am I fearful? Where am I fearful that I'm gaining weight or that I could gain weight? Because it's not a projection out there. It's, it's about me. And this is where the dismantle of this entire perceptual world takes place. We've got to get rigorously honest. Everything. No, uh, Michael. <laughs> Michael Caruana. I'll never forget he was talking to someone during an expression session and he went like this. It's never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever, never about the other person, ever, never, never. Just keep that in mind. So when you have an opinion about something, it's a, an opinion you're holding about yourself because it's never about the other person or the other situation or circumstance, whatever we're holding. Oh, there's so much freedom in this, I cannot even begin to tell you. I... <laughs> Each time I break through one of these little black lines from the separation out to world events, people, this is where every time I face one of these issues that I have an opinion about, I'm able to release it, I become happier and happier. So that's really what we're trying to do here. Now I'm really trying to squeeze this in in enough time. So come over here, lovely assistant, and we can take, yeah, we can take this off the screen. Because I have one other model that I want to share with all of you that kind of puts this into perspective. So you know, you know, we've got our, our Christ mind and the little perceptual, I, I almost call it a plaque. It's like a plaque on the Christ mind. You know, plaques are what cause embolisms and strokes and heart attacks in people. And it's like, you know, we, we just build these negative thought systems and clomp it on to our Christ mind and it squeezes the lifeblood out of our Christ mind. So, you know, that's one way to look at it. Now, 
lovely assistant. <laughs> this is our world. Can you see this? I don't know, it's kind of tiny. Um, these little balls, this clear tubing that you probably can't see at all because <laughs> I can barely see it. This is our Christ mind. Christ mind connects all of us together. These little tiny balls here are us, okay? They represent us around the Christ mind. Oh, look, these two just got attracted to each other. They're gonna probably be in a relationship, but they still have all these damn perceptions around it. Oh, she's not thin enough. He's not sensitive enough. Oh, he's got kids. Oh, she can't cook. You know, well, we're splitting up, okay? That's how we, this is how we live our life. This is how we live our life. Oh, these two got together, but they really did love each other. So let's have a baby. Okay, now they, there's three of them together. Oh, the kid, kid went on drugs. Okay, kick him out of the house. God, the wife isn't communicating anymore. Okay, she leaves. We're just running around our worlds looking for the perfect situation. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. The perfect situation, the perfect world doesn't exist. It's us making peace with it. And, okay, well, thank you, lovely assistant. So if we take this, kind of smush it all up like this. This is our world. Our world is just a thought system. And at the core of this thought system is the desire to love. That's all we want to do is love. But we're all in our little perceptual worlds thinking, oh, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to get it better. Oh, my God. Oh, look, that's the perfect person. That'll just make me happier and I'll get out. Oh, that's the kitty I want. I want that kitty. Oh, there are those red shoes. We've forgotten Christ. What's at the core of these, this whole world? It's love. It's the Christ mind. Call it whatever you will. White light, God, higher power. Doesn't matter. Because it's love. It's, it's pure. It doesn't need anymore. It's complete. It's miraculous. And that, oh, that's going to have to be for another show. But what I found, oh, thank you. They're telling me to look at the red light. <laughs> And I see all your beautiful faces up there. I just want a face on you. But this is where the miracles occur. A Course in Miracles. It's in the title, okay? That whole damn book is about getting, we're just a little plaque on the Christ mind. And we need to sort that out. That's what the whole book is, how to sort out the plaque. But really, the core is this love. This is kindness and gentleness and love and oh, miracles. There's enough for everybody. There is no suffering. Pain is impossible. And this is where we're all, this is the course in miracles. This is where it's attempting to get us to. This little piece of tubing. Just know that you're plenty. You have it all. You have no needs for anything else. Yeah. Yeah, that's where Revelation lives. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. And so I just, I, you know, this program is called Beyond the Body. And for me, this whole Levels of Mind um, chart has really helped me in sorting out my stuff. Um, and uh, I know it can for you too. And I know I put some links in. There's a YouTube David did on Levels of Mind that's just really great. So, and I know, oh, okay, I just, I have, I, I have two minutes. Some, a viewer wrote me and said I talk too fast. Okay, here's the deal. You have to go up on YouTube and use your pause button. Because when I open up to Holy Spirit, and when Holy Spirit starts telling me about Levels of Mind, my Holy Spirit my, is very chatty and, and doesn't stop. And so my lips have to move to keep up with my Holy Spirit. 
I wish I could pause and, you know, have great quiet silences when I'm, I'm on these programs, but it's not going to happen. So what I do invite you to have is to go up to YouTube, you know, play it, pause, let it sit in then play it, pause, because I'm, I'm not going to pause, not when I'm on this show. They only give me a half an hour and I probably have only a minute left. And I have just enough time to say, thank you so much for joining. And it's not on this program. Because I know you're watching because you want to love. You want to be loved. You want to be love. <laughs> Till next week, folks. And don't miss next week. We're going to talk about expression sessions. It's going to be very exciting. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Just a tiny mad idea At which the Son of God